Hey YouTube, it's Nathan here from Summer or Nothing, back again of uh, Project Peace Marsh, I guess we can call it. Yeah, Project uh, Project Peace Marsh, the Stanley Smallcraft Open Top Canoe Construction series that we're doing. So day one saw me and my partner Haley get the timber outside. Um, we cut out the templates for the base. We cut out uh, the templates for the bulkheads and for the decks. And uh, so we cut out the templates, we marked them out on the plywood and we started cutting them out. Day two, I think I came out on my own and cut them out. Day three uh, was when we decided to start recording this. So you guys witnessed, uh, we came out and we marked out the templates for the plank one and plank two on the marine ply. Uh, and today uh, I'm just gonna cut the first First couple of planks out of the first sheet of marine ply. Basically, if you guys aren't aware, this is a, a stitch and glue canoe. So we're going to be gluing the canoe together with epoxy resin. I haven't ordered the epoxy resin yet. I've got to do a bit of research into what I'm looking at with that. It will be sanded. It will be. It will have a thin coat of epoxy resin over the top of that, and then it will have some sort of um, sanding and some sort of either varnish or paint finish on top of that because apparently epoxy resin uh, it degrades it suffers under UV so it needs to be protected so I think once it's done it will be a case of annually sand it down and reapplying something just to protect it and that will be on the inside and on the outside so far panels that we've cut we've got the two base panels which are these bad boys these are almost um, I think they're about six foot long each so together they make the base of the canoe which is going to be about 12 foot. Then as we go through uh, you'll see these pieces here which are the bulkheads. So once the canoe starts to take shape these will get wedged right in each end of the canoe in the nose and the tail of the canoe if you like. On top of those will be the top deck which are these little pieces which go right into the very tip of the very tip of the nose and very tip of the tail of the canoe. Um, they've been shaped and curved there. So that's all done so far. So now all we need are the one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, the eight, the eight side planks to come together. And then after that, it will be, I think you call them the gunnels or gunwales, um, the inner and outer, which will be the pieces of trim that sit down the outside of the top of the canoe on each side, the seats, and I believe there's a carrying yoke as well that goes in the middle, just so when you've got it, you can sort of rest it on the back of your neck. And also, after that, we intend to make our own paddles as well. So, you know, you guys will get to be with us through the whole process. And so once the paddles have all been cut out, uh, I'm going to lay them together. Uh, I'm going to clamp them together. And then I'm going to go around planing and sanding the outside to make sure that all opposing panels are exactly the same as each other. And then I'll drill and stitch the whole body together, if you like and then sort of gradually sort of position it and tie it down and only once we're fully happy with the whole shape of the canoe will we start gluing it. The other slight hiccup, um, that, the well, potential hiccup we might have is <laughs> at this moment in time we're not entirely sure if we can construct a 14 foot canoe and actually get it out of the workshop at the same time. So once we mock the canoe together with cable ties, we're gonna have a brief go at sort of trying to position it and wiggle it. We've used a tape measure and we're fairly certain we'll be able to get it out, but if it is a hair over 14 foot long, we might run into some serious problems. But the reason I opted for the 14 foot canoe is I think from memory, it was like two, somewhere around 225 kilos of capacity. So I think um, with my clothes on, I'm around 90 kilos. So if you imagine two people my sort of size, that's 180 kilos. And then you've got about sort of 45 kilos for kit. So the plan is to be able to take two people plus camping equipment and potentially go canoe camping with it. So fingers crossed that will happen. Yeah, so hopefully you guys will get something out of this. Hopefully we'll get to the other end of it and can actually complete the canoe and then take you guys for our first test paddle. So yeah, without further ado, thank you very much for coming along and uh, why don't you join me while I fire up the jigsaw and cut out some panels. <laughs>
Okay, so hopefully uh, you guys can see from the panels when they're all stretched out sort of the rough idea of what's going to happen. So the narrower panels form the lower part of the side that's going to attach to the base or the bottom of the boat itself and then these slightly thicker panels will fit on top of those and form the upper side walls. So it's quite difficult to sort of get an idea of how it's all going to stitch together just from looking at it. I mean the, the curve of the panels sort of make it difficult to see how they're going to attach without actually having the bow of the panel in it. But that's literally I've got one last sheet to mark out and cut now before we can really sort of start to get a look at what we've got. I was thinking about potentially using the panels that I've already cut out to mark out around because it will be much easier to mark out around those on the next sheet than the, the paper templates but I'm concerned then that what we're going to do is we're going to end up losing again further the sort of outline of the actual shape itself of what it's supposed to be so I think what I'll do is I will mark out again as tedious as it may be with the paper and cut them. I'm a little bit concerned about the quality of the um, ply. I did order marine grade ply. It is stamped to say that it's marine grade ply so I've definitely got what I've asked for but it's not by any means the quality of marine grade ply that I was sort of hoping for. We'll see. I mean it's what I've got, so it's what I'm going to work with. I think if I was doing this again, I'd definitely, rather than ordering the ply and then sort of having it delivered, I'd want to go to someone who stocks it and sort of pick the sheets myself. I think I kind of knew that, and I think I'm going to kick myself for that. But, I mean, so far, I think just over £200 on ply, maybe. So, you know, it's not, not a cheap material, especially at the minute with everything, um, the way the prices have hiked with COVID. But it'll be fine. I think, you know, when you read through the book, um, <clears throat> it comes with this little pullout here and it gives you uh, exterior grade ply selection, uh, epoxy notes, maintenance, full size pattern instructions, ply sheet layout, seat details, and paddle plans. And it's got a really extensive section on sort of selecting your ply. And it says in there that sort of you can use exterior grade ply, it'll be fine. Um, because I think all of the ply is going to be treated and it's all going to be sealed in epoxy resin and fiberglass and then it's all going to be painted on top anyway so there's no point on the boat as long as you build it correctly where any of the ply is actually going to be exposed to water. I think the main thing they're concerned about that they highlight in there is that when the ply is constructed on the exterior grey ply rather than actually being wood running right the way through it's actually it's like a pulp and sometimes you get air pockets in the pulp so when you're trying to bend it and shape it it will crack so I've only used exterior grade ply as opposed to the marine ply for the base and for the bulkheads and for the deck boards and all of those they take less shape they don't get formed as much so they're not under as much stress I've checked the sides of it I've not found any um, air bubbles in what I've cut so far. If you find air bubbles, they say just to sort of fill it with like a, a filler, uh, sort of, mar you know, um, it, well, it mentions the filler in there. Um, but at the minute, I don't need to get any because um, I haven't found any air pockets. So that's all fine. So hopefully, everything's going to work out. Um, I think I will take my time to clamp the panels together and shave them and shape them and sand them to make sure that they are all identical in shape and the same with the base the two base panels put them together and sort of really work to make sure that everything is perfectly symmetrical so that I get a true hull um, but other than that I think sort of yeah making good progress so I hope you guys are enjoying it so far it's a little bit boring tonight because all you're doing is seeing uh, some ply board being cut out but you know all of these processes all of these builds they have to go through the sort of boring stage first uh, before they get more interesting, um, try and be a bit more detailed when it comes to the clamping and shaving and shaping of each individual panel. And then, yeah, fingers crossed in a couple of weeks we'll be ready to start stitching this thing together. Cool. Right, thank you very much for joining me guys. Uh, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers.